So welcome to our Eucharist this morning from Bonveau, the barn at Bonveau. Um, we're in the middle of a retreat with a number of uh, younger people from different parts of the world. So we, who will be sharing their musical and other talents with us uh, during the mass. And welcome to everybody who's joining us from wherever you may be uh, online. We're going to celebrate the Mass and we're going to incorporate the time of meditation into the Mass after communion as usual. And just a reminder of that fundamental theology that links the Eucharist and the prayer of the heart. In the ancient church, they spoke about three liturgies, the Liturgy of Heaven, the great choirs of heaven are singing all day long in the great act of worship. And then the liturgy of the altar here on earth, to which we might also add the liturgy of nature. But then between the two is the liturgy of the heart, the prayer of the heart. And that's why the basic theology of the Mass and the basic theology of meditation is the same theology. It's the theology of real presence. And real presence means that you are really present, that you are present as fully as the person who is present to you is present to you. And there's a, a verse I came across, I must have read it a hundred times or more, uh, without it jumping out of the page to me as it did uh, the other day in the second letter to the Corinthians. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is really present in you? Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is really present in you? And that presence, that real presence, reciprocal presence within our hearts is the same presence as we celebrate and experience in the Eucharist. And that's why we bring the two together and why some form of contemplative liturgy or why liturgy is by its very nature contemplative. So let's be open to that mutual presence which is at the heart of this this time that we spend together in worship today and samuel is going to lead us in the opening song Apenas nos pusimos en dos pies, comenzamos a mezclar por el sabano, siguiendo la manada de horizontes, más allá del horizonte, a nuevas tierras lejanas. Los niños en la espalda expectante, los ojos en alerta, todo oídos, olfetando aquel desconcertante paisaje nuevo. Desconocido, somos una especie en viaje, no tenemos pertenencias, sino equipaje. Vamos con el polen en el viento, oh, oh, oh. estamos vivos porque estamos en movimiento. Nunca estamos quietos, somos trashumantes, somos padre, hijo, nietos y bisnietos de inmigrantes. Es más mío lo que sueño que lo que toco. Yo no soy de aquí, pero tú tampoco. Yo no soy de aquí, pero tú tampoco. De ningún lado del todo y todos lados un poco somos una especie en viaje 
No tenemos pertenencias, sino equipaje. Vamos con el polen en el viento. Oh, oh, oh. Estamos vivos porque estamos en movimiento. Interesting. We were told that Spanish translators and that, that they had they could have a little break at the beginning. <laughs> So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The first uh, short story that I read in French was by the French writer Maupassant and it was a story called The Necklace. It made a strong impression upon me because it, it was such a, in a way, tragic story. It was about a, a woman who had ambitions of social status and but not much money. And she and her husband were invited to a, a ball with rich and glittering people and uh, she didn't have anything to wear, so they used up all their savings to buy a dress. And then uh, she wasn't satisfied because she needed jewelry. And she asked a rich friend of hers uh, if she could lend her a necklace. So she looked at a number of necklaces and that this woman had, and she chose a diamond necklace. And uh, she wore it very proud and then she went to the ball when she came home that night she realized she'd lost it and she was so ashamed and upset that she and her husband went to a jeweler and looked for one that was almost exactly the same uh, but absolutely way beyond their means so they downsized to a, a very small little flat and, uh, and uh, borrowed a huge amount of money to buy this necklace and it totally wrecked their lives for the next 10 years. They were paying off the debt and they broke with their friends and lived a very isolated life, working all the time to pay off the debt. And then one day, 10 years later, when she was uh, 10 years older, but looked 20 years older because of the life they'd been living. She was in the street and she met her friend from whom she'd borrowed the necklace. And her friend looked at her and said, where have you been all this time? And she said, I tried to reach you and, and you look terrible. What's happened? And so the woman told her about what had happened with the necklace. And the, her friend looked at her and said, oh my God, it was made of paste. It was a fake, fake diamonds. I think that ties in with the gospel today, which we'll look at, which we'll listen to in a moment and to the other readings about where your values lie. And We can waste our life, and we waste our life if we only live half alive, limited by the values and the insights that, we, that guide us. Maybe because we made a ridiculous mistake. Maybe because we are frightened. But for whatever reason, we can waste time frightening. And so live with a feeling of shallowness and meaninglessness and there's something missing in my life all the time. That might lead to a breakdown or to depression or to a midlife crisis. 
And there's always a chance. I mean, we can, it's always redeemable. There's a deathbed conversion. Grace is always there. Nevertheless, we squandered a great gift. Our mistakes are redeemable because sin, as Mother Julian of Norwich tells us, is behovely, which means sin actually is necessary. The sins in our life have a role to play. The mistakes are meaningful. They, God brings good out of, out of evil. Nevertheless, why should we wait for a deathbed conversion? I have come that you may have life, life in all its fullness, Jesus says. And the longer we wait to change, the more frightened we become to risk our lives, to risk losing our lives so that we can find it. And the harder it is to change. And that's why Jesus begins his public teaching with these words, the time has come. The kingdom of heaven is close at hand. God always takes us by surprise. Reality, we know that something is real because it surprises us. When we've given up, maybe, when we've despaired, when we think that we know everything, or like the man in the gospel today who trusts in possessions or achievements or success, the most important aspect of the gospel's teaching is to be childlike, unless you become like a child. And a child has this wonderful capacity and delights in being surprised. He's not frightened of being surprised. A child doesn't su surround himself with protection against reality or against surprise. And this is, I think, what meditation helps to restore us to, this childlikeness in relation to reality that allows us in Christian faith to say, yes, I actually do realize that Jesus Christ is really in me. Can't quite put that into words, but I do realize it. It pulls us out of the false securities into this poverty of spirit, away from all our control mechanisms and our self-protections, our lack of spontaneity. So, the waking up to reality, the experience that makes a difference, that's what this realization of Christ in you means. It's an experience, not just a belief, not just a thought, not just something I ascribe to or subscribe to. It's something that is known only in the experience itself. And it's not poetical, it's not metaphorical, it is real. And it is throughout the New Testament. It's the, the theme, really, of, of, the, of the whole New Testament, and especially of the letters, Christ in you, treasure in earthen vessels. I live no longer, but Christ lives in me, in the flesh. Christ is being formed in you. Christ in you, the hope of a glory to come. That's the, the theme, that's the refrain, I think, running through uh, the Christian scriptures. And it's constantly trying to get inside of our hearts, not just our heads. And that's what the Eucharist does. It also gets inside of us.
But let's ask God's mercy in our lives to set us free from illusion and false values and fear. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and set us free to forgive ourselves and others, Amen. through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, help us to draw near to you as you draw near to us in these sacred mysteries of Christ's love. Teach us that all our prayer is answered with unceasing kindness. Help us to find the presence of Christ within us so that we may be present to him in all people and in the beauty of nature. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the First reading is by Jose. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, the preacher says. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. For so it is that a man who has labored wisely, skillfully and successfully, must leave what is his own to someone who has not toiled for it at all. This too is vanity and great injustice. For what does he gain for all the toil and strain that he has undergone under the sun? What of all his laborious days, his cares of office, his restless nights? This too is vanity. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks, thanks be to God. God. This is vanity, emptiness, and shallowness. What the woman with the necklace must have felt. <clears throat> Please join in the refrain, which goes like this. Oh, Lord, you have been a refuge.
Taina, now from Brazil, who is also accompanying this retreat from uh, online with a number of uh, meditators from around the world. Taina is, uh, will read the second reading and share a commentary on it with us. Thank you, Taina. Hi, good morning, here from Brazil. So I read them from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed and he is your life, you, you too will be revealed is all your glory with him. That's why you must kill everything in, your, in you that belongs only to earthly life, fornication, impurity, guilt, passion, evil desires, and especially, especially Greed, which is the same thing as worshiping a false god. And never tell each other lies. You have stripped off your old behavior with your old self. And you have put on a new self, which will progress toward true knowledge, that more is, it is renewed in the image of its creator. And in that image, there is no room for distinction between Greek, and Jew between the circuses or the uncircuses, or between barbarian and citizen, slave and free man. There is only Christ. He is everything, and He is in everything. The word of the Lord. So, and through these days, we are involved with with the WCCM and young people retreat. And they have young people from all over the world, some in Bonvo and some online. And during these days, they have been inspired by Lawrence Talks, which help us to remember how the work of meditation can lead us to this new self that is actually not, not new. And it always, always exists, but it has been suffocated by the demands of everyday life. And the media shows us all the time cases of violence, malice and other terrible things that maybe can believe that human beings can do. 
and uh, we can we can get used to all of these and often thinking that human beings are marked by these <laughs> behaviors but uh, as we learn from the diagram that Lawrence illustrate for us with the levels of meditation and, uh, you live in the, live, the level of distraction of the monkey mind and uh, you get in touch with your uh, psychology uh, issues, traumas, and after we will break the ego here and reach the unified consciousness with Christ. And uh, in this encounter, we remember who we are really called to be, our true self or our new self. Um, the experience of meditation reveals to us this new self that has actually always been there waiting for this encounter. And uh, in the true self, what overthrows is mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, uh, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. These are the fruits of meditation. And uh, if you remember what we learned these days with Lawrence, you can say that the, the world self sees, for example, nature as a resource to be explored. And now we're in the environmental crisis. The new selves or our true selves remind us of our notion of interdependence of nature. The old self sees work purely as a material reward but the new self knows that work is a form of expression, uh, is an a answer to a calling, a vocation. Um, the old self may contribute to unhealthy sex in the world. That new self can perceive sex as something sacred that's part of our relationships. So you learn a lot of things. Uh, you learn these retreats how the body is the language of love in our tradition. We learned that concept, concept of health is much more than absence of disease and that must include the spiritual dimension. Um, today as a teacher in university, um, I have contact with many young people. Uh, it's common to, to feel a, a lack of meaning proposal, like an uncertain existential crisis. Maybe because they are too focused on the things of the earth, on money, certificates, status, and other things. And the feeling is if they are almost that. And meditation is a great gift that we can give to young people because it can lead to this hidden life in Christ. Uh, finally, the, the purpose of life, Lawrence tells us, is for us to live to awake our maximal potential, that which we can be. Uh, in this way, you can live part of heaven here now on earth. And, and here and now, we don't need to wait something. What really seeks your red within us, it was just hidden. Or as St. Augustine used to say, late have I loved you, built so old and so new. Late have I loved you. And see, you are within, and I was looking in the external world. That's, thanks. Thank you, Taina, very much. Thank you for getting up so early. <laughs> Uh, even earlier than the rooster, I think. But the, I think the rooster and the other animals around you uh, also appreciated what you shared. Thank you very much. Kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. My friend, he replied, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, watch and be on your guard against avarice of any kind. For a person's life is not made secure by what they own, even when they have more than they need. And then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man who, having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, what am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. And then he said, this is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, my soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, fool, this very night, the demand will be made for your soul. And this hoard of yours, who will it belong to then? So it is, when someone stores up treasure for themselves in place of making themselves rich in the sight of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So when we hear of this man who had a great boost in his wealth through a very good crop and built bigger barns, and it's hard not to think of the amazing profits that the oil companies are making during this oil uh, during this present financial crisis. Massive increase in their quarterly profits while many people are, are not able to heat or, or to run their homes and pay their electricity bills. Or whoever it was who owns Amazon, whose wealth, I think, doubled or tripled during COVID because everybody was using Amazon. So things don't change that much, just the scale. The man in the crowd who came out and asked Jesus to uh, make a decision about his, his inheritance and that he was trying to get out of his brother, he must have been listening to Jesus teaching but he wasn't listening to what Jesus was teaching. He was just thinking this is a uh, influential person of authority. Uh, I'll get him on my side in this law case. Obsessed with his family inheritance while Jesus was delivering his wisdom. Possessions, possessions obsess us, whether it's possessing someone you love or possessing a status that you've gained or possessing possessions that you've earned. Possessions cloud our minds, at least when we become possessive about them. You can use possessions in different ways. You can use wealth in different ways. You can hoard it 
or you can distribute it and redistribute the wealth on the planet because there is more than enough to go around and feed everybody. But when possessiveness clouds our minds, we become like the rich people who Jesus says have a, cannot get into the kingdom of heaven because we are possessed, locked, and paralyzed by fear, fear of losing, fear of somebody taking it away from us. And so Jesus sums it up in those words, life does not consist in possessions. We turn to possessions, sometimes out of anxiety, as we do with retail therapy, comfort buying, when we buy things on Amazon or in the mall because we're feeling depressed or we're feeling stressed. But they give very temporary relief, like opioids and it quickly, easily becomes an addiction. So Jesus' is teaching here goes to the, to the heart of the spiritual nature of our humanity, which we discover not through possessiveness, but through letting go, by relaxing our grip, our clinging. And that's what poverty of spirit is, and why meditation, like love, leads us into this state of enjoyment without possessiveness. That's the whole purpose of prayer. Not to change God's mind, not to tell God how great he is as if he didn't know, not to get God on my side so that I can be stronger when I take my brother to court over, over a, a trial, a, a case. But the purpose of prayer is that we are emptied out so that we can be filled with the utter fullness of God, the pleroma, the fullness of fullness, the overflowingness of the divine which is the kingdom. Happy then are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Life gives us many ways to learn poverty of spirit, and the mantra is one of them. It's portable, it's continuous, it's simple, and it's endlessly surprising once you get into it. Jesus in the parable then, and parables in Jesus are always very simple, almost childlike, but they're not just little moral, moralistic things. There's always an exaggeration in a parable that makes us think out of the box, and which means we can go back to it over and over again and apply it to the condition of life we're in at this moment. So in this parable of the rich man who has a good crop and builds all the barns and thinks, oh, now I can just retire, I'll just enjoy my life, eat, drink, be merry. He understands the mind of the rich. He understands the mind of the frightened, the mind of the, of the possessive. And this internal dialogue that we hear in the parable is something that goes on in us, I think. I can recognize it. It's the search for false security. It's the fear of being vulnerable. And it's also the fear of giving away, of letting go, 
and the fear of sharing without limit. And exposing that dialogue of the ego is important because it leads to a change of values once we recognize it and see it in ourselves that we are concerned about security. I was amazed at talking to some undergraduates at a university once and about their plans for the future and half of them were talking about their, you know, their, their, their well, their salaries, but also their pension plans. We've, we've sort of got stuck on this fear of the future and unable to live with uncertainty, which is the first condition of being alive, because that's the nature of life, is that we don't know. Do not worry about your life. In the next passage, after this, uh, uh, this parable, is the passage where Jesus says, do not worry about your life. He says that, do not worry about your life. or what you are to eat, or what you are to wear. Because the body is more than food, the body is glorious in itself. You don't have to have a distorted or dysfunctional attitude towards your body. You identify your body with your clothes, your appearance, your muscles. And don't worry about what you are to wear. Don't worry about the impression you're making on other people. Be yourself. I mean, the, the teaching here is not just consolation. Do not worry, everything's are going to be okay. Pat on the back. This is taking us into the heart of reality and how to live this life now in the fullest possible manner living with uncertainty so that we can be surprised, but living with deep grounded faith so that we can be resilient when hardships come. Life is more than food, the body more than clothing. You must not worry, he says. Your father knows what you need before you ask. We are resting on this benevolent ground of being, Like the earth yields its crops, produces this abundance that we see around us here in this height of summer in Bombo. The earth yields all of this in the same way that the ground of being, the source, God, is constantly producing benefits for humanity if we know how to receive them and we know how to share them. There is no need to be afraid, he says, little flock, for it has pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. So what we have to do in this, uh, in this teaching is to stop worrying. How do we stop worrying? Lay aside our anxieties. Well, that's, and because we are so consumed by worries and anxieties, not only about material things, but about emotional fulfillment and uh, satisfaction. We can be so anxious about missing an opportunity that we're frightened to act because we want to keep our options open and we're frightened to commit. So this is human nature, but it's it's so reinforced by our culture today and the example of so many people around us who are suffering from this that it's difficult for any of us to step outside of the pattern and be ourselves. That's why there is a great hunger for interiority, for meditation. And it's why we who also have the gift of faith to share, 
should be sharing this as part of the riches of our spiritual tradition because it is it, it is needed in the emergency we are in and when we sit down to meditate as we begin to learn and are always learning to say the mantra with attention with love this is exactly what we are doing we're piercing through all those security defenses all those walls all those fantasies fantasies about god and all of those uh, those defense mechanisms that we have unconsciously constructed little by little the bricks fall out of the wall and we find ourselves able really to recognize that Jesus Christ is in us and among us and around us. Sydney is going to read the intercessions for us now. <clears throat> the readings of today's Mass challenge us to reflect on the values we hold in life our work, and our possessions. The call is to a contemplative path and attitude. And we pray that as our daily meditation transforms our lives, we may be open more and more to this call to simplicity and trust. We pray for those involved on both sides of the Ukraine-Russia war. Now that the gas and food security of many countries becomes affected by the conflict, we pray that those responsible will become aware of the suffering that will come from starvation and hunger. We pray for the young people attending the retreat this week that they may continue to search for that deeper meaning in their lives and that their time here in Bonneville will lead them to deeper peace and a spirit of service to their communities. As the cost of living increases in so many parts of our world, we pray for the poor and vulnerable, for refugees, the homeless, and the sick. They are often the ones who suffer the most from hunger, discomfort, loneliness, and abuse. We pray that as their brothers and sisters, we each, in our own way, will reach out to help those in need with compassion and love. When confronted with economic inequality, climate disaster, and nuclear war, may we abide in hope, trust in our innate goodness and our divine partner. We pray for loving connection to see us through the times of loneliness and isolation in a technological world. We pray for all creation, especially for animals that are mistreated. Let us recognize their suffering and open our hearts to see their value and help us to take care of them. We pray for all those who asked our prayers in today's chat, for those in our Bonneville Book of Prayer, for Hilde van Koppenolle from Belgium, 
We pray in silence for our pers personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we offer our prayers for the needs of the world, for those we love and for who suffer. Grant what we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, our brother and our saviour. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to bless these offerings we make and bless the intention of our hearts as we make them so that they may become for us the sacrament of our healing. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, that we should always and everywhere give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, because you have called us out of darkness and fear into your own wonderful light. And so with angels, archangels, thrones and dominions and all the powers of the cosmos, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, Pascal, our Bishop, and all those who serve your people. We pray for unity among all Christians and friendship and love between followers of all different traditions. We pray for those who have died, for those who mourn them, and those who are preparing to die. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Benedict, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen, 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 Now let's pray in the sacred words that Jesus gave us in our mother tongue. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all.
This is the Lamb of God, the bread of life, broken for us, so that we who are broken may be made whole. I fear we who listen to him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. given us, O Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delights and sweetness in every taste. We'll meditate now for about 15 minutes. Thank you. 
bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will not thirst. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this gift of communion, of a community of friends and fellow disciples. Help us to continue to seek the truth and to share your love with each other and the world, to defend those who are defenseless and to strike for justice in your name. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You were somewhere. So I'd just like to bring your attention to two events, uh, important events that will be happening this autumn when we restart our program. And uh, the first is the John Main Seminar, which is a seminar that has been happening for quite a long time in honor of the legacy which we've received from John Main. And this year, the speaker will be Herman von Rompuy, politician and meditator. And it, it, well, it's happening at Bonveau, on the ground, not only online. And the dates are November 17 to 20. And there's an optional uh, meditation retreat, which we've been doing before every John Main seminar to help you arrive and tune in and digest the event. So that's November 17 to 20. Do you want to say something more about Herman? Uh, no, I think uh, if you heard his uh, talk last week, uh, you'll have a sense of the contemplative and very practical insight he has into the <clears throat> crisis that the world is in and uh, the very wise and um, hopeful, uh, but also very realistic uh, description of it and there'll also be at the seminar uh, a group of young young people who will be responding directly and uh, and others a group of older people as well who'll be in uh, uh, sharing in the conversation and workshops of course between the between the sessions so it's a time really of it, Herman believes that you know the, the lifeblood of democracy is conversation so it will be the conversation as well as these talks thank you and the title is the challenge of democracy and the challenge to democracy and the other event which is happening early in september from the 7th to the 11th will be led by paul dunn he's a american psychologist specialized in grief and it will be led also by lawrence and myself so we'll be uh, working with Paul, uh, listening to the teaching on meditation, and then I'll be leading movement work to help people understand the trauma that they're trying to uncouple. And that's September 7 to 11. Okay. And the title is Healing the Broken Heart, Discovering Peace After Loss. Yeah, that's quite important, isn't it? <laughs> and, and then also in September, all our online programs start again. Thank you.
So thank you for the everyone the wonderful contribution which is not yet finished uh, to our to our worship today, and uh, in gratitude for that, and to all those who've joined us in every time zone. Uh, let's ask God's blessing as we lift our hands together as a sign that we bless each other with the blessing we have received. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have um, Kevin and Mike. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Kevin, <laughs> without Mike. <laughs> of